Hello there, and welcome to another Starfield ship review. In today's review, we got a very, very cool looking ship today. This is the Space Ox, or in my case, the Space Ox 3. So the number after the name just uh, denotes the tiering. So the higher the number, the better the stats. So this version, for instance, has a B-class reactor of 35 power. The A-class, or the, sorry, the tier 2 or tier 1 version might have weaker uh, stats. Aesthetically, though, the ship will be exactly the same. So yeah, it's a very cool ship. It's um, it's a mix of Hope Tech and some Shroud Eklund and kind of, it's yeah, it's a bit of an amalgamation of a lot of different ships. Very cool ship. It's clearly meant to be like a cargo ship. I mean, it's called the Space Ox, so you know. It's stat-wise, it's got a fuel of 420, which, um, haha, 420, am I right? No, I'm sorry. Um... That seems to be the main fuel tanks there. They, they give 210 each. So it's decent fuel. You can jump around with it. You won't need to stop to refuel. It's got a hull of 1,206, which for a B-class is absolutely phenomenal. Like, that's, that's really good. Now, obviously it makes sense because a lot of modules here, a lot of structural pieces. But yeah, it's just very, very nice. It's got a carrying capacity of 2,300, which isn't bad. Now, you could probably upgrade that cargo capacity, because I know those, um, I'm not sure if those containers there are the max uh, type of containers. Those containers, varying on the color, they have more. I believe they're the, they might be the default ones. They're like 210, but you can get them up to like 400. But anyway, when we do a teardown, we'll, uh, we'll double check all that. And then it has a shielded capacity of zero, which... I can't tell if I've ever seen that before. I don't know if there's like a, if there's shielded on this, but when we get the tear down, we will know for definite. It's got a B-class reactor of 35 power, which is really good for B-class. Like we're only five off max. It's got a crew of six, which again, really good. Jump range of 24 light years, which isn't amazing. You could obviously pump it up to 30 if you get some stats and st or get a, a better jump drive, but it's not bad. Shields of almost 1100, 1035 to be exact, which is phenomenal. Like the max shield in the game is 1500, but that, 1600 I believe. But that requires, for B class, that requires you to do the Vanguard quest line. So obviously if you do the Vanguard quest line, you can slap that on and Bobby's your uncle, you've got 1500 shields. But still, this is not a bad shield. That shield and whole combo, very nice. And then we've got three sets of weapons. We've got ballistics, lasers, and EMP for the ballistic weapons. It looks like we have three turreted um, auto cannons there. There's one mounted on the back and then two mounted on the side. And then we have two turreted lasers on the front there, each of the little wings. And then I believe we have two AMPs underneath there. So it's got a quite a good uh, weapon layout. They are turreted though, some people might not like that. But you know, pretty decent. So this ship uh, costs me 347,000 credits. Now this price will vary depending on which tier of the ship you pick up in your perks. Since I am picking up the highest tier variant and I have the perk that decreases my buy uh, like cost by like 40%, so I'm paying this amount. So let's go purchase it. So I found this here in Neon, in the generic ship vendor in his little hut here. Now if you come here, to neon here is neon on the map it's on the planet voli alpha in the voli system there it is there and there's voli if you come here and it's not here you can obviously check some of the other generic ship vendors but what i usually would do is i would go to Seoul there and i would land on mercury and once on mercury i would hop out of the captain's seat and hop in like one of the other seats wait 24 hours 24 hours on mercury is over 2000 hours in game i think it could be way more but that amount of time passing will reset every single ship and normal vendor's inventory. And then you can go back here and check and see if what if he has it. Now, if he doesn't have it, you could then go back to Mercury and reset again. Or you could jump around some of the other vendors first to see. Because if it's sold here at this vendor, it's also sold at other vendors. But anyway, we're going to quickly jump and do a little... Uh, well, not a little, because it's a big ship. We're going to do a walkthrough and then we're going to do a teardown at the end. So yeah. All right, so here's the glamour shot. Really cool looking ship. I really like the design of it. I like those big Hope Tech uh, landing thrusters. Anyway, let's try not to kill myself. Is it? Oh, no, we're good. Yeah, ha, ha. So, 
we've got these um see this is a slight nitpick on my part uh so first thing is obviously we've got this like uh this is just a, a generic st a structure piece uh, it's a breaking thruster but does it bother anyone else that like so these two pieces are both here but i really wish you could flip them so they could mirror like you're telling me if i spend like hundreds of thousands of credits on the ship I can't ask the manufacturer to just install one backwards so it looks more aesthetically pleasing. Look at that. That's... But yeah, anyway, that's just a very small nitpick. Doesn't affect anything. Anyway, uh, ignore that pop-up. Uh, so, we're going to head to entrance. Entrance is in the back, which is quite interesting. You could potentially put it on the side here. So, you've got extra space already. You can, can add some more cargo here. And we've got some more on the other side. But yeah, if we enter through the back. There's that big reactor. Oh, she got some beefy engines, I give her that. We've also got that turret looking down. So we enter through a tile entryway. Got the little door here. I'm gonna try my very best to not get lost because yeah, this should look big. So immediately we have a one by one hope tech um companionway with a door leading left and a door leading right. And we'll go this way, because Sam wants to go this way. So we have another one by one. This is a storage room from Hope Tech that leads upstairs. We'll just check the other side as well. And yeah, exact same on the other side. Oh, there's no upstairs on this side. Okay. Better for me. I can't get lost. So up we go. And we have another one by one storage room from Hope Tech. What's behind door number one? We have a. Ooh. What is this? I can't tell if this is a storage room or an engine. No, this is a storage room. I haven't seen this before. This is very cool. So this is, I'm assuming, a Hope Tech um, uh, 3x2 storage room. Very cool. This, like, this feels Hope Tech. You've got, like, unlike a lot of the other storage rooms or cargo rooms, this is, yeah, this is, like, very organized, really cool. I like that you have this, like, little computer terminal here. We've also got some windows, which is always nice to have. This is very cool. Now, now see, here's the thing. I've said this many times before. These don't really add anything from a gameplay point of view. It would be really cool if they added extra storage, like, you know, give us, like, an extra 2K storage, but they don't. So, from a gameplay point of view, I'd probably rip this out and replace it with something else. But I have to say... This kind of fits the aesthetic. I would probably wouldn't rip this out just because it fits the aesthetic really well. Now, someone else in the comments in a couple of other videos when we were looking at uh, different freighters mentioned something that is very true. Getting the cargo out might be slightly difficult because you'd have to go that way and then down and then across. It's kind of weird they didn't put like maybe the docking hatch on top, but anyway. So then if we continue going this way, we have a... Is there a way to go faster than the speed of light? And none of that grab tech cheating? So this looks like this is a Hope Tech computer room, potentially very cool room. I really like this, so we're gonna have to look at this in the teardown. So we've got some storage here. We've got a lot of computers. Uh, look like uh, radio frequencies. Hope, Hope Tech using like, they look like uh, little uh, radios. I mean, it would make sense, Hope Tech making their ships. Hello, little, my friendly Willby. Really like this room. I love how Hope Tech put this, like... <laughs> this is Hope Tech all over. They put this, like, computer terminal. This probably cost, like, a small fortune to, like, install it. And they're like, yeah, let's have a lawn chair. Cool just, just do it's lawn like chairs, yeah. Get credit for your thoughts, as they say. No. Anyway. So if we come back this way, we have, uh, comes around to, got a little jump, jump seat there. Then we have this, like, really cool, uh, office type thing. Why is this, why is there a lock safe in my ship? Interesting. This is really cool. I really like this room, because a lot of these, like, these big 3 by 2 rooms, they're just usually a wide room. But this one, clearly, like, it has a little office here. You've got, like, a lot of stations. And then over here, we have... Oh, this is, I believe, this is a Hope Tech uh, armory with a brig here. You want to put some rowdy people in there. 
And then for some reason Hope Tech are slightly questionable. They decide to put the weapons right beside the armory. So when the prisoner breaks out, you know, he's good to go. Yeah, not the not the best, not the worst. I mean, you if also if you're like the sort of person where you like don't sleep safely at night and you want protection, you could easily sleep in there. If we come back this way, I believe go through here. Talk to me. We have a one by one storage room here or a companion. I don't know if this is this is a one by one. It looks a bit longer, but I think it is a one by one. And then we have the we have a Shroud Eklund bridge. I really like this bridge, but I, I kind of think it doesn't fit on this sort of vessel. We've seen this bridge before. You've got the pilot seat there, really nice view. You've got your co-pilot to the left, which Sam has taken over. Got a navigator to the right, and then you've got these two extra seats for extra crew members. Yeah, I don't know. It just I feel like giving this ship being like a big kind of hauler, it would have made more sense to have like a Hope Tech bridge. Like you could have easily like scrapped the bridge on the top there. I anyway, we're going to take it off and see how she performs. Really cool looking ship though. Phenomenal ship. Lifting off now. And we've got some extremely large engine there. As always, we'll do a teardown at the end of the video. We've got that uh, demo stalker underneath, nice and slim. I see, I probably would have put that docker like in line with the the big room, the cargo room, but you know. And we're back where we belong. So just looking at the, oh, I need here to Sam. Sorry, Sam, got to kick you out again. Apologies. Just for the oh, wrong one. Sam gives me extra engine power, which when I'm doing this review, it kind of is not very fair. We're gonna remove him for a minute. So now, um, so I have a perk that increases my power by five. For some of the sake of this video, we're not going to be doing that. Now, just looking at the layout, we have a fair bit of power. We don't have like extremely we have a lot but we don't have the most we have 35 power so we could pull some from the ballistic weapons here if we wanted to and put a couple in the ems here i personally wouldn't really use ems i'm not usually a fan of them but that's just me so the ballistic weapons and the lasers are both turreted so they cannot be fired manually and then we've got those two em weapons there and we'll do a quick speed test we've got a base speed of 140 i believe yeah it's not too bad we have a boost speed of 400, which, no, 500, which isn't, whoa, why did that get really bright? How, how did the engines firing off bright up? <laughs> don't know, anyway. Yeah, so it's like, not bad. Um, that's kind of weird. I don't know if that's like a glitch or maybe it's meant to do that. Do a quick agility test now. So, oh dear lord, yeah, okay, we'll be here a while. How's your guys, guys day been going? Been going good? Good, yeah, yeah. Oh, there we go. Coming back, okay. That's, that's like easily a two. Yeah, that's, and then we'll do a pitch. It should seem as slow. It's not fast, but like, it's kind of like, I'd say like a four, maybe a three. And then we'll do a quick roll there. Roll's kind of, yeah. Still though, it's a very cool ship. So we're going to quickly go down and do a teardown just to showcase the interior workings. All right, so here we are in the teardown. So we do not have any habitat modules on the top. So we'll do the weaponry. Now, obviously, these weapons sit in the middle, but we just kind of separated them a little bit. So we've got a pair of these Reza 10 PHC pulse laser turrets from Shinigami. They're B-class, 1200 range. Fire rate of 5, and they do 30 shield damage with 4 power. And then behind that we have two KE-42 cannon turrets, B-class, 1800 range, 2.5 fire rate, 45 hull damage, and they have 4 power. Now we also have another one here that's mounted a little bit higher on this uh, this little kind of e equipment bracer. And then as for the fuel tanks, we have two of these 500T HE-3 tanks from Ballistic Solutions. They give us the 420. And then we have these uh, Stormax 30 cargo holds. We have four of these. They're all the same. They're 210. Now you can opt for uh, the more, the larger ones, which if we go to cargo, the larger ones are basically, they're more expensive, these red ones here. They're more expensive, but it doubles the capacity. Uh, so you could basically effectively turn this from 810 to like 1600. And then we have two more of these ballast cargo holds here, 100 cm sextant shield system, 210 each. 
Now, these are laid out quite similarly to the shielded cargo. So if you wanted to slap on, you know, some, if you wanted to move some more illicit cargo, like some Aurora, you can do that. And then uh, for, I don't think we have anything else. So aesthetic pieces, we have this Hope Tech Pipe 4. We've got Hope Tech Pipe A mid and another Hope Tech Pipe A mid. We have this Shroud mid bracer, a pair of these Deimos Wing C, starboard and port. We have uh, three of these Shroud mid bracers with some uh, Nova thruster arrays, starboard and port. And then we have two more of these equipment plates. Now these are perfect because you can mount weapons on them. So if it was up to me, I'd probably remove those EM weapons and just put some more weapons, maybe some like missile launchers or some particles. Anyway, as we move on to the middle of the ship, so we have our Viking CP100 cockpit from Shroud Eklund, uh, 200 cargo and crew space of four. Behind that, we have the Hope Tech Companionway 1x1. We have the Hope Tech Computer Core Room 2x2. Really, really cool room. We have this Hope Tech Armory 2x1, which could potentially remove this and put a control room. Um, I feel like this doesn't fit the Armory. I'd maybe put uh, either a control room or a living quarters or a captain's quarters, potentially, or a workshop. This ship has the potential to be like modified to be like a kind of a heavy warship. And then behind that, we have the Cargo Hall 2x3. Very, very cool ship. A very, very cool module. One of the few Cargo Halls where I'm like, maybe keep it. And then obviously we have the Hope Tech Companionway there. And then for the uh, landing gear, we have four of these Hope 55 landing gear from Hope Tech. They give four landing thrust each, which is really nice. And then we have the DC-303 Fast Ignition Reactor from Deep Core. B-Class 35 power, which is really, really nice. I'm going to really quickly see if we can get a little bit more. Squeeze as much out as possible. So there's the DC. Yeah, so this is the one we're currently using. This is 35. Can we get a little bit higher? We have, okay, so this one here. This 104D Mag Inertial. It's 39 power. I believe this is the highest B-Class in the game. Now, does this easily slot in there? It does indeed. This easily slots in, so you can upgrade to that if you wanted to. Let me just bring that back. So the price difference is this is forty thousand, whereas this is forty six thousand. So you're basically paying another like six k, which isn't too bad. And then we have the grab drive there beside us. That's the SGD twenty three hundred grab drive from Slate Aerospace. Got a jump thrust of 30 B class and 10 power, which gives us a 24. So being a jump thrust of 30, let's see if we can improve upon that. Grab drive B class. Okay, so we have we have one here. This is 21k. So this is like all oh, an extra 7 6k. And this would bring us up to 29 light years. So this is a, something you could look at. This is Relodyne here, whereas the slain. So there's a potential upgrade. And then we have two of these Amandon uh, 31 engines. Done 31 engines from Amandon. B-class. 3 max power. 17, 670 thrust. Um, engine thrust. And 3600 maneuvering thrust. So I'm assuming these are going to be the best of that engine. Let me just check. They probably don't sell these engines here, but we can check. B class, do you? Oh, no, you don't. Okay. Oh, maybe. Hold on now. No, I don't think so. No, no, you do. No, no, you do. no, you don't. Never mind. So yeah, so there's. I'm not sure if these are the best engines in the Amandon. I feel like there might be 41 or 51 of these types of engines, but anyway, just, yeah. Uh, and then for the structural pieces, we have a pair of these shroud nulls cap D. We've got the port four and the starboard four. And then we have four of these equipment plates, two mounted on these struts, and then two mounted here on the um, these uh, pieces. And then at the back here, we have a Hope Tech cap A aft, just there to kind of hold stuff. And then on the bottom of the vessel, oh, sorry, I forgot the weapons, my bad. And then underneath the bridge, we have two of these Supaku 600 GC suppressors from Shinigami, B class, 960 range, fire rate of 125. They do an electromagnetic damage of 55, and they require 6 power each, so 12 power altogether. And I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, in my experience, I've played on the very hard difficulty, and 
just using simple like ballistic cannons and or uh, pla um, particle weapons, I've had very little trouble uh, disabling vessels. So I kind of feel like the suppressors are slightly overkill, considering that these two require 12 power to operate. When you don't really need them at 12, if you just put them at like one pip, they're perfectly fine. So if it's up to me, I'd probably tear these off. And I would probably strap some missile pods on the back here. Just so you feel like you're doing something when your turrets are kind of doing their work. Anyway. And then on the bottom here, we only have... We have... At the back here, we've got the ship bed landing bay 200 from Tayo. And then we have three of these companion ways one by one. So these are... Uh, these are all of our cargo isobo... Or our, our, the last of our habitats. And then we have four of these uh, De Gamma 1000 cargo holes from Panoptes. They all do 210. And then we have the 44 T Defender Shield Generator from Dogstar B Class 9 Power 1035 um, shielding. Now we can go higher. So let me see. So this is this is the same one here. Wait, what? Okay, I thought I read that wrong, my bad. Uh, so if we, we if we complete the Vanguard quest line, you get this bad boy here. This is the Bulwark shield. This is 1450 shield, phenomenal shield. Now, if you haven't completed the Vanguard quest line, you can go with these Warden ones. This Warden SG400, which is around the same price and same requirement. It gives you an extra, basically like an extra 90 shields, which isn't bad. And then for the... I think that's really ish. We have for the structural pieces, we have this Hope Tech thruster here. We have the Hope Tech pipes A mid. A pair of these shroud bracers A, and then we have four, three of these shroud mid bracers, and then the Accu lander 11 from Shroud Eckland. You could strap another one of these. I don't have any, of course. You could strap another one of them there. Or you could potentially, if you wanted to pump up the cargo capacity a little bit more. You could get some of these bad boys. And let me just remove these. So you could like slap slap these in here. Um, I'm just going to actually real quick. So I'm going to put the ship back together and see if I was to do that. Would it look any? Oh, my bad. Whoops. Okay, no problem. My finger slipped. Let me see what happens if we were to strap some of these. I think it might add to the aesthetic personally. So let's remove. So what you could do is you could remove these. Remove these. I move this. I'm just gonna move the shield up one, like that. And then if we put two of these bad boys here, see so yeah, that that actually looks kind of cool. It like you've got the double stacked, and you're getting a little bit like obviously it's gonna be a little more heavier, but like that's a potential way to lay out some more storage if you wanted to. But anyway, like all in all, it's a very cool ship. It's it's definitely a ship you could upgrade and make a combat vessel like. It already is pretty kitted for combat. Like, if you wanted to, you could probably remove those cargo area, uh, cargo. You could remove these and replace them with more habitats just to give you a little bit more hull and some more location for weapons, but you don't have to. You could go, like, Belter Fleet from, uh, from like, the Expanse and just keep strapping weapons on it, you know? Make it as industrious looking as possible. But yeah, uh... As always, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think of this ship. Have you flown it? After seeing this review, would you like to fly it? Do you have any ideas for how you'd spec it? I know, for me personally, I'd, like I said, I'd probably armor it up a little bit better, make it like an armored kind of freighter, you know, like a some like a combat vessel that, you know, can hold, because it already is a combat vessel, but you can make it a little bit better. But as always, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, if you like this sort of content, obviously, don't subscribe if you don't want to and um, uh, check some of my other reviews. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys.